language in BBC Two's new comedy from Paul Whitehouse and Chris Langham, both in need of a bit of help. Um, bearing in mind what you were saying last week about letting go, you know, yeah. um, I tried to release her. Well, you know. it's very... Yeah, I actually found it very difficult to... Well, it's very You know, to... Um, so, yeah, yeah, so I killed her, yeah. Well, uh, what? I mean, I know it's not a perfect solution, and it's not what either of us would have wanted as a couple. You killed her? <laughs> yeah. Right. Do you think... That's very bad. No, I thought you might say that. Well, it is. What are you going to do now? Well, you I... You hadn't really thought this through, had you? No, I had. So what are you going to do now? Well, obviously, I've got to yes. you know, dispose of the body. No. Well, I can't just leave it there. You should go to the police. Are you mad? I've just killed someone. Well, exactly. Well, the police are the last people I want to go to. You... <sighs> You put me in a very difficult position. This is a serious crime. This is not covered by client confidentiality. What do you mean? Well, what I mean is I'm going to have to tell someone. I'm going to have to tell the police. Right. Sorry. <laughs> but if you do that... Right. I'll kill you. No, I can keep a secret. I mean, they say it. it's a privilege. It's not. It's a prison. What do you mean exactly? Well, why do people insist on coming up to me in the street and telling me who I am? You're John Hardacre. I know who I am. Why do they do it? I don't know. Why do you think they would do that? Well, because they know me, obviously. What? These are all people you know? No, they know me off the telly. Oh, right. You know, people coming up to me saying, I really admire your work. And I don't mean to sound ungrateful, because without my fans, I'd be nothing. Well, obviously, I wouldn't be nothing because I'm a very talented man, but the fact remains that I don't have a private life. My life belongs to other people. You know, I can see them in my peripheral vision, you know. I try to ignore them, but there they are. Oh, look, it's him, look, don't go mad, just a sprinkle, you know. I mean, one woman this morning, she was so rude, you know, right in my face. Oh, look, it's him, you're him, aren't you? So, you know, and they say, don't go mad, just a sprinkle. Well, it would never don't go mad, just a sprinkle. It's don't go mad, just a sprinkle. I mean, that's not a sprinkle. That's a sprinkle. That's titillation. That's something a vet does. That's gross. Thank you for not doing it, by the way. What? When I came in. What? Don't go mad, just a sprinkle. Much appreciated. Very sensitive of you. Thanks very much. I won't forget it. Hmm. So... Sorry, who are you? <laughs> Stop it. No, I mean, really, who are you? I'm John Hardacre. Oh, I see. Oh, who am I really like inside? No, I mean, just who are you? Well, I'm so many different people, really, you know. I'm so many different things to others, and I'm so different now from what I was, you know. If I knew who I was, I wouldn't be here, would I? Right. Do you see what I mean? Mm, -hmm. yes. So you're... Well, I mean, obviously, you're, you're, you're very well known. <laughs> yeah. Everyone knows you. Mm, yes. Practically a household name. <laughs> yes. John Hardy. Yes, and I'll tell you something else. That's my real name. It's not a stage name. I was just lucky. Hmm. John, if you were to go to, I don't know, Mars... Yes. ..and meet a completely new group of people... Uh-huh. ..how would you describe to them what it is you're famous for doing? What, if they didn't know who I was? Well, you are on Mars. Oh, yes. I suppose I'd describe myself as a, a communicator. Right. Uh, and a facilitator. Right. And a friend. Right. Um, let's pretend I've been locked in a time capsule. Yeah. OK? And you've stumbled on this time capsule Ooh. and you've opened it. What, for charity? Possibly, yes. Um, I've come out... Oh, very brave. Congratulations. It's still difficult, isn't no, it? ..of the time capsule. Oh, of course, right? uh, yes. And I look around and I say, this is a completely different world from the world that I know. I'm just a humble Fletcher making crossbows for the court of Henry II. 
What are those cars? Never seen anything like that before. And well, I... how do you know what they're called, then? No, you're right, I don't. And I say to you, I say, tell me, kind sir... <laughs> Hale. Yes, Hale. Um, <laughs> well, well met, Sir Knight. Yeah, all right. I say to you, in this brave new world, what line of work are you in? What, what do you do for a, you know, what's your bloody job? Um, what do I say? You answer him, John. Well, he wouldn't know what a TV chef was. TV chef? He'd know what a chef was. TV chef. But he wouldn't know what a TV was. Oh, well. Can I pick you up on something, actually? Mm. A Fletcher, I think, makes arrows, not crossbows. Yeah, whatever. I'm not knocking marketing, you know, it's, it's challenging. But when you strip it all away, there's not a lot there, really. It's a bit soulless. Right. You know, and when I think back to my childhood, there was such passion, you know. In my memory, we spent the old time singing. You know, it was fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, I don't sing anymore. No? No, shame, really. I wonder why that is. Well, I think people are looking at it a bit funny, you know, but I wish I did. Yeah, well, perhaps you should. <laughs> Not now, though. Oh, no. Well, I mean, you could if you wanted to. <laughs> oh, I feel a bit tough. Yeah. A bit what? Well, a bit daft, really, you know. Oh, right. Well, there's no need to. I mean, it was only a suggestion. No, you no. You, you fair, have... No, fair play, man. Well, I'd give it a go. OK. Yeah, give it a minute now, then. Right. Yeah, right, I've got one. Always reminds me of a home, this one. OK. Edelweiss, Edelweiss Every morning you greet me Small and white Clean and bright you look happy to meet me Blossom of snow, may you bloom and grow Bloom and grow forever Bless my homeland forever. Very nice. Oh, that's better. I tell you what, that's like having a really good dump. And I'm not a great fan of this hot weather, so I was having a difficult day as it was, and I picked up this fair in German Street, just outside Trumpers. Did you know that that used to be Edward Heath's barbers? No, no, I didn't. Ah, well, you see, Peter, I learned from you and you learned from me. Y yes, it's a two-way street. Oh, yes, very good, yes. Anyway, I picked up this fellow, very nicely turned out gentleman, he got in the back of the cab, gave me an address in Barnes. Well, I'd only got as far as Buckingham Palace Road, I'd stopped at a red light, and blow me if he didn't jump out of the cab and leg it down the road. He did a runner. Oh, God, how depressing. <laughs> That's not the half of it, you know. I turned round and I thought, that smell. And do you know what? He'd done his business on the back seat. Yes, yeah, a thing. You know, outrageous. A man like that with a nice suit and everything. Well, obviously I'm no stranger to that kind of thing. What with... Rose and her condition, but it's a far cry, isn't it? You know, your wife's from a stranger's. Oh, she must have been bloody furious. Oh, I was livid, you know. I mean, in fact, I was incensed. So I drove like a madman down to Bow Street, although God knows why, because the police are useless, aren't they? Well, I stormed in there and I went up to the desk sergeant. I grabbed him by the lapels, Lester. I know him quite well. And I dragged him out to the cab. I opened the back seat and I, I pointed at the... Uh, the article, you know, and I said, there you are, what are you going to do about that? And do you know what he said? No. He said, well, Monty, in ten days, if no-one's claimed it, it's yours. <laughs> yes. No. Oh, straight You're up. You're kidding. No, as God is my witness. <laughs> That's very funny. Oh, well, you know, I suppose if something came out of it, at least Lester showed me the funny side, you know. Yeah, well, it certainly made me laugh. But I can't help thinking it would have been a lot funnier if it happened to someone else. You've had a very interesting life, Louis. I would you like to hear my story? 
Yes, I'd like that very much. Would you mind if I expressed it in the form of dance? Dance? I'd find that very liberating. No, not at all. I'd like that. Right. That'd be fine. It seemed like a happy dance. It's quite a moving dance. Is it? Hey. Were you jumping over difficulties in your life? Difficult hurdles. Yeah. Knocking them down, jumping over them, knocking them down, jumping over them, knocking them down. Yeah. The hurdles! Colin Jackson! Are you, <laughs> are you at peace with yourself? Oh, hey. Right. Um, Lou, you're supposed to be on, on medication. Hey. Are you taking your medication? No. Where is your medication? I threw it away. I poured it down the drain. Bye-bye. The main thing is that you're here, and that is the main thing, because it shows that, you know, all else apart, you both really want it to work, and that's very, very good. So perhaps you'd like to start off by telling me how you first met. Well, what we usually tell people, right, is that I was on top of uh, the number 38 bus. Balls Pond Road. Right, yeah, and uh, I was sitting on the back and uh, he got on and he noticed that I had a Howlin' Wolf album. I went up and said, Smoke Static Lightning, Howlin' Wolf. Rare import. Yeah. So th that's what you usually tell people? Yes. Yeah. So, so how did you actually meet? Don't know. Can't remember. Not Bulls Pond Road? No, I was brought up in Tewkesbury. Well then, in that case, um, perhaps you'd like to say what is it that brought you here today? A well, taxi. We've been oh. together now for 32 years now. We've been together we're now for 40 years. Touring and, and it recording. don't seem a day too much. Mainly touring these days, you know. And I, I always think the best kind of friendship is where you don't really notice the other person. And I, I've never really noticed him, you know. Um, it's like, you know, we're both part of each other's landscape. You know? didn't notice me? No, I mean, like, you know, you've never been any bother. Oh, that's good to know. But then the other night, right? Good for myself. We're on stage team. in Cardiff on our Children of the Night. Have you tour, met my right? mate? He's no bother. Oh, for God's sake! Yeah, actually, guys, can, can I just stop you there? It, it's great to riff like this, guys, but uh, one at a time, you know. So who wants to go first? Okay. Do you want to? I don't care. Oh, come on! Don't take everything the wrong way. All right. Do you want to? No. You carry on. All right. We've been on tour. I don't recently, get it wrong. But we had to cancel oh, the last few things. Look, do you want to do no. this? So. No. So we've been on tour, right? And uh, last week we had a, a bit of unpleasantness. A bit of unpleasantness. And our manager said that if we didn't get help, a bit we'd of have to call it a day after 32 years me. on the road. He hit me full in the face with a mic stand. Right, OK. Can I just stop you there? There's something that I'd like to say to both of you, really. Thank you for the music. I first started listening to you guys when I was at university and I absolutely adored your stuff. Uh, really, I, I was a bit, a bit of a no-qualms bore, to be honest, because I, I, I expect I, I know stuff about the qualms that even you guys don't know. And, and for a period of time, Denny, I actually kind of modelled myself on you. Anyway, Denny, you hit Les. Why? Well, we were on stage, right? And we were in the middle of Destiny Winked. Ah. Oh. And uh, he's just about to start his solo, and I right. thought, he's going to pull that face, you know? What face? That face that you pull, you know? And I thought, I've been watching that face for 32 years, and I'm going to fucking smash it, you know? And I picked up the mic stand, and I got him whack right on the bridge of the nose. What face? That face you do, you know? That's bollocks. No, no you, you do. do, you do. Hey! Get no, off. Les, Get off. Les. Get off. Get him off me! Les, Get sit off. down. Just... Just sit down. Sorry. You all right? Yeah, it's just silly, you know? Sorry. It's embarrassing. OK. I mean, he's a really nice man, but he's very irritating. Yeah. He's very irritating indeed. So, Les, Denny hits you around the face with a microphone stand. Yep. How do you feel about that? Well, That's not important. No, no, actually, it look, is. Look, our manager said... Max. Right, Max, yeah. Mad Max, I call him. Right. Yeah. Do you know why? No. 
Because he's mad. Right. Do you see? Yes, I think so. Mad Max. Mad Max. Yep. Mad Max. Mad Max. Yeah, actually, you are quite irritating. OK. Don't go mad, just a sprinkle. I feel quite uncomfortable doing it. Come on, give it a go. Come don't on, go don't mad, go mad. No, 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 left hand. Come don't on. go mad, just, just a, a sprinkle. sprinkle. Think, 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 the lightness, the lightness of the touch. Lightness of touch, the lightness, the touch, the lightness of don't the touch. Don't go mad, just a sprinkle. That's it. Mm. Don't go mad, just a sprinkle. Don't. Keep it simple, do the sprinkle. Keep it simple. Don't go mad, just a sprinkle. The lightness, the smile, the lightness, the smile. Just... Don't go mad, just a sprinkle. Excellent, that's fantastic. Oh, I'm going to be able to have a job. It's a little something for you. Thank you No, it's a souvenir from here. Oh, that's very, very nice of you. Yes. Ooh, My yes. wife has asked me to give it to you. What is it? It's a little bit of salted fish. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, because where I come from, right, it's traditional to give salted fish at Easter. It, it's, um, it's quite strong, isn't it? Yeah, so what you call it, the mallet, that's it. Is it? Yeah. Mm. You don't have to eat it straight away, right? No, no. But don't leave it for more than about six or seven months. No, no, I, I, I won't. Um, I, um, I, I, I didn't get anything for you. That's OK. It's all right. You know, listen, Doctor, I've, I've had that dream again. Oh, right. Exactly the same? No, exactly, no, right? Because this time, when the donkey is looking around at me from the driving seat, right? He's smiling. Is he? Really? Yeah, the donkey is smiling. Right. But I see a frightening smile. You know what I mean? A frightening smile? Yes, yes. Like this. Oh, yes. You know? Mm. No, that's, that's quite frightening, mm. yes. So what, what do you think that is meaning? Well, it could, it, it could mean any number of things, really. Have you been particularly worried about anything at the moment? Not really, no. How are things at home? Yeah, it's p pretty good, you know, because since the judge, in her infinite wisdom, is making me come here, I've really been trying hard not to hurt no one, right? And for three weeks now, I've not laid a finger on anyone. Actually, I'm going to put this somewhere else. And it's like you say, right, Doctor? Mm -hmm, yeah. If I can put my head on the pillow yes. without having kicked someone or punched, right? No, I can hear you. Or gouged, right? Any time I can lay my head on the pillow without having smashed no one to pieces, right? Yeah. Then... I'm a winner. But I have to say that yeah. I did hit my wife the other day. Oh, did you? Oh, dear. She was very surprised because I've been so good lately, mm -hmm. right? And what with me being so gentle, when it happened, she didn't know what hit her. No, well, she did. Yeah, she did. It was you. Yeah, it was me. Yeah. Yeah. But I have to say, Doctor, right, that this time she really was asking for it. Well, she didn't actually say, Johnny, please hit me, did she? No. 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 But you know what it's like when you've been married for a long time? Yeah. You get to read the signs, right? Yeah. And she was giving me a look, right, that she knows is going to make me give her a quick slap. So there you go, and that's that. Yes, but you see, Johnny, that is the problem. But listen, right, because where I grew up, right, in my village and also in my family, it's not unusual for a man to hit a woman, obviously, as long as they're married. Yeah. It's like my father always used to say, right, what do you say to a woman with two black eyes? I don't know. Nothing. You already told her twice. <laughs> but, that, you know, that was my father. He was a very light-hearted man. Yes, he sounds like a, a lot of fun. But, you know, Doctor, I, I know that it's wrong to hear my wife. And right? it is, yes. But, you know, sometimes I, I look around at this world in which we live in, right? Mm. And I'm in such pain, you know, because of all the cruelties and the injustices, right? Mm. And man's inhumanities to man. Mm. Right? It's like a burden. Like a what? A burden. A burden? A, yes. a burden. Yes. And when I hit my wife, for a few moments, the burden is lifted, right? Yeah. And I'm calm, and I can't relax, and then I can't sleep. Well, that, that's, that's good. But it's not, no. No? No, because then along is coming the donkey. Oh, yes, the smiling donkey. You know, it's like a vicious circle. Is it? It's like a catch-29 situation. Yes, catch-22. No, it's worse than that. So what I, what I like to do at this point is to ask couples if they would to turn and face each other, if, you, if you'd like to do that, OK? Right. Oh, dear. <coughs> yeah. What? And then what I'd like you to do... Don't look at me like that. I can't help it. You're so lovely. Fuck off. No, that's good. That's good, actually, because what I'd like you to do is to tell the other person three things you really liked about them when you first got together. Three? Yeah, three positive things Christ. you really like about the other person. Who, who wants to go first? Denny, why don't you go first?
Cheers, mate. This is doing me the world of good. Maybe you should split up. I've always r really loved your smile. What? I've always thought you had a really, you know, great smile. It's really attractive. <laughs> That's one. And uh, although you, you know, he's primarily known as a guitarist, I think you've probably got one of the best rock voices on the planet. And and when my daughter had to be rushed to hospital with an overdose, and we were on stage, and uh, he dedicated a song to her. Stone bracket. I'll never forget that. Hey, mate. All right, man. Howling wolf. Wolf. Could you sign this? Yeah, is it too? Pete. Pete. Oh, hello. <sighs> ah, made it. <laughs> Thank goodness. Clement, it's tomorrow. Is it? Already? No, no, your appointment. It's, it's not today, it's tomorrow. Oh, dash. Yes. I'm so sorry. Uh, well, I just have to come back then. Yes, I, I'm yes. afraid you will. I've got someone else coming in a minute. All right, come yes. on, move your legs. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> See, have I ever told you that you remind me very much of my first wife? Really? Question. Yeah, completely what is the, different. What's the difference then between cottage pie and shepherd's pie? Cottage pie is beef and shepherd's pie is lamb. I don't use either of them, I use mince. Mince? Mince. Can I give you a little tip? Yeah. It's just a secret little thing. Okay. A little bit of cinnamon. Cinnamon? Yeah, just a pinch. No one knows what it is, but they really like it. Okay. Yeah, all right, I'll remember that. Oh, how are you with fish? No, I, I like fish, you know, but uh, I only cook cottage pie. Oh. You know, she does all the cooking. Or we eat out. Mm. She's still out there, I'll bet. Yeah, there she is. Circling like a bloody vulture. How long have we got left? Just over half an hour. Oh, Christ. What do you want to do? I don't mind. Do you want to talk about anything? No. No. <laughs> What's this? Your psychiatry certificate? <laughs> it's my psychology degree. What does it say? Then? No idea, it's in Latin. Well, you don't know what it says? I think it says if you ever have a client who doesn't want therapy but can't leave because his wife's outside, just take the money and be grateful. You know why they put those things in Latin, don't you? It's traditional. So that 99% of the population can't understand it. Ooh, big chip on your shoulder just there. But it's all smoke and mirrors, your world it is. Um, I think in a sense that's true, yes. Yeah, right. For a start, it's middle class. No, it's not. It is. It's not. It's self-indulgent. It's not self-indulgent. It's modern. It's a modern thing. I mean, years ago. All right, if you were a caveman, mm. you would have seen some terrible things. I mean, tragic things, yeah. right? Well, before people like you came along, they just got over it. Yeah, but they're shaming. I shame mean, you know, cavemen didn't wander around bleating about their midlife crisis. Because they didn't live past 28, Gary. OK, right, Thank yep. You. All right, my dad, right, mm -hmm. in the Second World War in the Desert War, right? right? He's turned round to his mate standing next to him. <coughs> top of his head, he's been shot away, right? Jesus. I mean, yeah, he didn't go running to some counsellor. He dealt with it in a traditional way, with dignity. How? 
He got absolutely blind drunk. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then what? No, he stayed blind drunk for the rest of his life. Well, uh, I think he would have benefited from a bit of therapy. <laughs> what, my dad? Yeah. You must be joking, he'd have hated it. I oh. mean, it is horrible. It's horrible sitting here doing this. You don't know what it's like. Yes, I do. Well, you've been in therapy? Yeah, I have. I am. Well, you're in therapy now? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. God, this is like the bloody blind leading the blind. Yeah, and of course you see her every day. Well, she's my receptionist. Exactly. Though, really, she acts. Oh, she's an actress. I don't mean she acts as a receptionist, though she does. She, she is a receptionist. But really, she's an actress. She's just acting as a receptionist. I don't mean acting the part of a yeah, receptionist. All, all right, mate, yeah, I get it. She really is a receptionist. Yeah, look, I still understand it, mate. How old is she? She's 28. Right. Why? Well, I'm just trying to get a picture of this woman, you know. You can't. I've tried on the internet. I don't think she's that well known. Peter, why don't you try and put into words what it is you find so fascinating about this woman? Right. Well, she... If, if you... When I... I would... Oh. Good. It's not really going to work, is it, mate? You're feeling a bit tongue-tied. Tongue-tied, yes. Yeah, it's I'm probably tongue -tied, good... yes. Yeah, it's probably tongue-tied. Tongue-tied, that's yeah, very up, good. Shut up, mate. Sorry. It's probably a good thing that you can't express your feelings to her, because I it might... I might put her off. No, it... actually, yes. Right. Peter, why don't you come with me and my mates to an Iron John hog roast and hot tub weekend on the Brick and Beacons, mate? I've never told anyone that before. But that was like the darkest thing I've ever, ever done, you know. And I try never to think about that period of my life, because when I do... a fucking shame, you know, it just eats me alive. I mean... Hmm. Because I feel like I'm the only one, you know. Ooh. I, um, I, oh, your time's up. Have you seen the old man in the closed-down market kicking up the paper with his worn-out shoes? And where's the sign? Mm -hmm. At his side, yesterday's paper with yesterday's news. So how, how can, can you tell... Oh, go on, man, that's great. Me. How can you tell me you're lonely and say to me that the sun don't shine? Uh, let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of London. I'll show you something to make you change your mind. <laughs> that's brilliant. Go on, man. <laughs> Lovely. You want to hear this? Once I built a tower... Yeah, I haven't got very long, actually.